So let's get started. Again, just some important things to remember before you start doing your mailings. These people are busy. They get tons of mail and they want things in a standardized format. So if they have to look for stuff, if, they have, if you make them do any extra work, what you're doing is you're lowering the probability that they're going to they're gonna really look into your materials, do research, call you, or whatever. If you make them work too hard, they might not do it. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to call you in. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about proper packaging of your headshot, resume, and your cover letter. I'm going, to, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to package your cover letter and your headshot and your resume. We're going to talk about envelopes and labels, addressing the envelopes, following up, and where to get the names and addresses. And also, you know, I'm going to remind you of this just to make sure that you're going to be reachable when they call you. So first thing, proper packaging. The first thing you want to do is you want to lay out everything that you need. So as you can see there on the bottom right, you'll see my headshot, the envelope that you can see is a windowed envelope. You'll see my cover letter. You'll see my resume. You'll see my postcards over there. You'll see labels. And then I got some other things that you're going to need, you know, scissors, ruler, pen, you know. Um, I just like to lay, lay everything out when I get started. Kind of reminds me of my brother when he sits down to eat. He will fill up his plate with a mountain of food. He will put everything on the table. He will stand above the table and rubbing his hands together, looking at the table to make sure that there's nothing else that he needs before he sits down to eat. Because once he sits down, he doesn't want to get up again. <laughs> so, you know, it's just good to, just to make sure that you have everything you need. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to trim your resume to your headshot. Now, if you notice, if you look closely, you'll be able to see here that the headshot is rested on a piece of paper. It's sitting on top of a piece of paper. That piece of paper is my resume. Okay. And why did I do that? Because the resume is faced upwards and I put the headshot on it, covering up everything that's written so that I can trim it now. Because the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line around it because what I want to do is I want to fit the resume exactly to the size of my headshot. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. You want to trim it exactly to the right size. Okay? So if you look at it now after I've done the, the, the pen line, you can see that the pen line goes all the way around the resume. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut that so that now... As you can see, what's left over after I've cut it is that the resume is the exact same size as my headshot. So if you look at it from the front, I put that on the back because that's what you're going to do. You're going to you're going to attach your resume to the back of your headshot. And the reason that you do that is because when you send your headshot and your resume to a busy casting office or a an agent's office where they get tons of mail, what you want to make sure does not happen is that those two things get separated. You don't want your resume to get separated from your headshot. Now this is standard industry practice in the United States. And you can do that either with staples or with a glue. Now when I first heard someone say that you can staple your headshot to your resume, the first thing I thought of was I'm going to ruin my headshot. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Just do it up in the corners. Four, all you need is four staples, one in each corner, and you staple your headshot to your resume, okay? So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do. Now let's look at your cover letter. First of all, make sure you sign it. It's a nice, personable touch. Now it's true that you're gonna to wanna to have your name typewritten on there, you know, or printed out with the computer at the very end of the letter, but sign it. It's a nice, personal touch. Now here's something that's really interesting. If you have space, and when I say space, I'm talking about this area right here on your cover letter. I have space over here to the right. What you could do is to get your cover letter downsized. And I'll show you how to do that. You could downsize your cover letter. So if you notice on the right is a regular size cover letter. On the left is that same cover letter that's downsized. So what you could do is then attach your cover letter directly to your headshot. And so now you got everything at one touch. They pick up one 
piece of material and they got your headshot on the one side with your cover letter that's very, very brief. And on the back, you got your resume. Everything's there. Everything's attached. No papers can get separated. And they got everything right there. The other advantage to doing it this way, too, is when they look at your headshot, they're more likely to look directly at your cover letter and at least read some of it. Sometimes they might just pick up your headshot, look at your resume and say, okay, but, and they may or may not look at your cover letter. But in this particular way, what you're kind of doing is forcing them to look at it. Okay. So anyway, this was just a little trick that I learned from my coach, from my career coach that I thought was pretty cool because like I said, it, it gets them to look at it right away, right alongside your headshot. So how do you do that? How do you downsize your cover letter? Let me show you. So if you type your cover letter up in a regular Word document, this font is uh, size 12. And so this is what it looks like. This is what it would look like if I were to print it out normally. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to downsize it because I want, to, I want it to fit on the right side of my headshot in this case. And I, and I will reiterate if you have space to do that. You might, your headshot might not allow you to do this. But if, if it is, then that's great. So what you want to do then, you want to go over to the margin and you want to drag that over to about halfway down the page and there you go. Okay. Now, if you print it out like this and leave it the same font, it's still going to be too big. So then what you're going to want to do now is to go up to format, look at the font and then use a smaller font, for example, size 10, but you can have to, you have to test this out yourself. And now, it's it's a completely different story. So now it's this is the size that I used on the example that I just showed you. So that's how to downsize your cover letter. Now here's something else to think about. You've written your cover letter. Your cover letter has your personal information on it. It has your email address. It has your personal address. And it also has your telephone number on it. Now those are the things that you might not want everybody to see. I didn't want everybody to see that. And why am I even talking about this? Because if you're going to be sending out your headshots in a windowed envelope, then so you might consider folding your cover letter so as to not reveal your personal information to others. Because like I said, you know, if you're on the windowed envelope, everybody's going to see your headshot and your cover letter. If you don't want everybody to see your cover letter, then fold it. So then it'll look like this when they pull it out of the envelope and it'll also look like this to whoever sees it in the window in the envelope. Then there's mailing labels. Now, <laughs> if you don't have labels and you have to send out 100 or 150 packages, that's a lot of work and it's a lot of time. And labels can help you to cut down that amount of time considerably. So if you're going to a big city it's probably going to be easier for you to get to buy labels to go actually to go to a store Barnes and Nobles or the drama bookshop in New York or Samuel French and buy those labels because they have those labels you can also buy them online at some places I'm going to show you a couple places where you can maybe get them but there's another alternative even if you don't have this luxury now it's going to take some time anyway but it could prove to save you time down the road and that is to put the addresses, the names and addresses of the people that you want to contact in a document and use a software and buy the the paper and the adhesives that you need, the stickers that you need, and then print out your own labels. You could do that too. You could print them out and then you could just paste them on the envelope. It'll save you a lot of time. It's going to take you a lot of time to set that up in the beginning, but once you do, because like I said, you're not going to be just sending out mailings once you're gonna be sending them out multiple times so the first one might take you a long time to set this up but then after that all your future mailings are gonna go a lot quicker okay because you know all you have to do is just peel them off and paste them on the envelope It'll save you so much time I'm telling you okay so then there's the finished package now like I said I've written on the top because I didn't have any labels for my own address but you could print those out too you could you could make your own labels and print those out and put that up there so you don't have to write that on each and every envelope and then that's what the front will look like if you have your windowed envelope okay there you go it's that simple now let's talk a little bit about your postcards now as you know you got your headshot and you got your postcard 
So here's a little technique that, that will help to set you apart from others if your situation is like mine was a few years ago, where I was coming from another country, going to New York, and wanting to get acting work. So if you remember correctly, one of the approaches has you send your postcards first. And then as you get closer, you send your big package with your headshot, your resume, and your cover letter. And that's what I was advised to do. So I sent out my postcard first with my headshot on it, with my picture on it. And then after sending postcards out like that two or three times, then what I did, since I was living in Italy, then I sent postcards of different landmarks in Italy. So I sent one of the, the Colosseum. And then the next time I might send one from the Vatican. And then I would go back and send another one with my headshot on it. So this was really, really cool. And this was a great suggestion by Brian O'Neill because what happened was when I got to New York and I called some of these people and I said, hello, my name's Anthony Smith. And one of the guys even said, oh, you're the guy from Italy. And I was like, yeah, that's me. He said, yeah, we, we used to get your cards. They're nice and nice cards. And so that made me stand out from everybody else because there's not a lot of other actors that do stuff like that. You see what I mean? So you want to try to use everything that you can possibly use to stand out and be different. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. No, we're going to talk a lot more about that when we talk about actually marketing yourself. But that's one of the keys. So it was just a little technique, so I thought it might be interesting to you. You can do that if, you, let's say you're living in the United States. Let's see, say you live in Boise, Idaho, and you want to go to, and you're planning on going to Los Angeles. You could do the same kind of thing and send maybe postcards with potatoes on them. You know what I mean? Or potato guns or something like that. You know, in mixing them up with your headshot so that when you get there and you make those phone calls and you contact the people and you tell them that you're back, or that you're here, you know, you're going to be the guy who used to send us potato gun postcards. So it's going to make you stand out, you know. And this goes for just about any country that you're in. So think about the things that you can utilize to make yourself stand out from everybody else. So why do we use postcards? One of them is, is because they serve as reminders to your contacts. So you send out the big package, now you want to keep reminding them because one of the, the big mistakes that a lot of actors make they send out one headshot, one resume, and one cover letter, and then they and they sit back and wait. It, that's not a good idea. You're just wasting. In a lot of cases, you're wasting time. You have to build on what you what you already started. And one way to do that is by sending out postcards. There's nothing wrong with it with sending out a postcard. And as a matter of fact, it's something that's pretty much in line with the industry standards. That people do that all the time. Actors do that all the time. They show that you care about your career. It sets you apart already. That sets you apart from a lot of new actors who don't know what they're doing and they'll send out that one headshot resume and cover letter and sit back and wait. Already you're showing that you care about your career enough to not only send out postcards, but utilize them in the correct manner. They show that you're investing in your career because anybody who's in the business knows, if you remember the, the what we did last week and we talked about how much all this stuff costs you, anybody who's sending out postcards, especially if they're really, really good quality and it's a really, really good headshot on that card and you're writing the right things on it, that just gives a message of professionalism and the, the fact that you're investing in your career because people know that costs money to do that. Also, they show that you have a method to marketing yourself. That's part of your method. They show that you're persistent so that you don't give up easily. So what do you think about what you just saw? Was that information helpful to you? You've just seen one third of the module on how to stuff the envelopes. In other words, you have seen half of step number seven of the 16 step mailing process. In this particular module, I then go on to talk about when and how often you need to send out those postcards, what to write on them, where to find the names and addresses of the casting directors and agents to whom you want to send those cards. I also talk about submitting online and how to do that correctly, and also another alternative to traditional mailings to get yourself noticed. Finally, I talk about what your chances are for getting called in and what you can do to increase those chances. And that is just one module of 24 total modules.
So if you learned a lot in these last 15 minutes, just think of how much you can learn about starting your acting career in the Acting Career Quick Start Home Study course. When I said I would walk you through the entire process of starting your acting career step by step, that's exactly what I mean. I'll see you in the course.